For today's lesson, we will be discussing about distance chord theorem and chord arc congruence theorem. So let's start with theorem 110, which is the distance chord theorem. So this states that in the same circle or congruent circles, chords are congruent if and only if their distances from the center of the circle are equal. So when we say equal distances, that means they are equidistant. So if the chords have the same distance from the center of the given circle, then the chords must be congruent with one another and vice versa. So for example, you have here circle O with segment AB and segment CD which are chords of circle O. Now let's say we put here a segment from AB going to the center, also to the other one from the center going to CD, and let's name this as E and then F. Now if EO has the same distance with OF, or they are just congruent, then by the distance chord theorem, you can say that AB is also congruent with CD. So the two chords now are congruent since they are equidistant from the center of the given circle. Next is we have theorem 111 which is the chord arc congruence theorem. So in a circle or in congruent circles, Two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So here, if the chords are congruent, then the corresponding arcs are also congruent and vice versa. So example, you have here circle O with segment AB and segment CD, which are chords. So you have here AB and segment CD are chords of circle O. Now, first is if, let's say, AB, this chord AB is congruent with chord CD. So, according to theorem 111, if the chords are congruent, then the corresponding arcs are congruent. So in this case, we have AB. Arc AB is also congruent with arc CD. So these are the arcs. You have arc AB and then arc CD. So this happens since the chords are congruent. Okay? And since this is if and only if, that means it's vice versa. We can also have first the arc. So for example, if arc AB is congruent with arc CD, then we can also conclude that the chords, the corresponding chords are congruent as well. Okay, so it's either of the two. Or another example, let's say we have two different circles here. But let's assume that these two circles are congruent. So we have here circle A and circle M with AB and MR as the radii of the two circles. So let's say that the that segment AB is congruent with segment MR. So that makes circle A and circle M congruent. Okay, so let's say we have congruent circles. So if chord EF or segment EF is congruent again with the other chord on the other circle, which is chord or segment GD, then by applying the theorem, 
we can also say that the corresponding arcs of the two chords are also congruent. Then, arc EF is also congruent with arc GD. Okay, this happens since on the first place, the two circles containing the two chords are already congruent. So, we can also apply this one. Or the opposite, we can have the arcs first. So, if EF arc EF is congruent with arc GD, then the corresponding chords are congruent, which are segment EF and segment GD. So, let's just have this example. Let's say you have your circle E. So, chords FA and MR are equidistant from the center of circle E. So, equidistant, that means they have the same distance to circle E. Now, segment ET is perpendicular with MR and segment ES is also perpendicular with FA. If MR is 16 and ET and ES is both equal to 8, find FA. So, the one that is missing now is FA. Now, from what we know, chords FA and MR are equidistant. So, the two segments here, ES and ET, they just have the same distance, which is actually given, which is 8. So, that means these two are congruent. So, from that, we can say that FA, segment FA, is congruent with segment MR. So, this happens because of the distance chord theorem. Or, whenever the chords are equidistant or they just have the same distance to the center, then the chords are considered to be congruent. So, from that, we can already have the measurement of FA since MR is given, this one, which is 16. So, FA is also 16 units. So, that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the distance chord theorem and the chord arc theorem. So, see you next time.